Welcome, my friends. If you are visiting with us, you are welcome here. You are invited into the blessing of this community of love. We love virtually even <laughs> through Zoom. We are journeying through the season of Easter in which we are invited to live into the deep meaning of resurrected life. We recognize in this place that we are resurrected in Christ, which means that resurrection is not something that begins at death, but we walk through death in this life into resurrection, dying to what needs to die in us and in our world that we might live. This is a journey of the soul and you are invited to this community that recognizes this journey as essential to life. This is what it means to be church, to be in this together, and you are welcome here. Today, I want to especially welcome the Reverend Mary Catherine Cole, who is our homilist today. If you have not gotten to meet Mary Catherine, she is our new part-time associate for youth formation. She was ordained to the diaconate last Saturday in Philadelphia. And uh, God willing, in the creek don't rise, she'll be ordained to the priesthood later this year. I welcome her into our virtual pulpit this morning. I'm delighted with all I know of her, and I look forward to the many gifts and wisdom she will impart in our midst today and in the days to come. May God be with you. Let's pray. Oh God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour love into our hearts that such that such that such that loving you in all that we do, we obtain your promises, which exceed all that we desire. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us join together in the liturgy of the word. A reading from Acts. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, get up and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you were reading? He replied, how can I unless someone guides me? and he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter and like a lamb silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? for his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom may I ask, does the prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found him at Azotus, 
And as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for the fifth Sunday of Easter is Psalm 22, verses 24 through 30. My praise is of him in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied, and those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord and all the families of the nations bow before him. For kingship belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. To him alone, all who sleep in the earth bow down and worship. All who go down to the dust fall before him. My soul shall live for him. My descendants shall serve him. They shall be known as the Lord's forever. They shall come and make known to a people yet unborn the saving deeds that he has done. Okay. A reading from the first letter of John. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love. <clears throat> Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be a, the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. By this, we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love. And those who abide in love abide in God, and a God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment. And whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. 
He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it in, abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I and them bear much fruit because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. This is the gospel of the Lord. First, there was nothing. Then there was everything. Then in a park above a Western city after dusk, the air is raining messages. A woman sits on the ground, leaning against a pine. Its bark presses hard against her back, hard as life. Its needles scent the air and a force hums in the heart of the wood. Her ears tune down to the lowest frequencies. The tree is saying things in words before words. It says, sun and water are questions endlessly worth answering. It says, a good answer must be reinvented many times from scratch. It says, every piece of earth needs a new way to grip it. There are more ways to branch than any cedar pencil will ever find. A thing can travel everywhere just by holding still. These are the first exquisite lines from Richard Powers' 2018 novel, The Overstory. We are invited into the stories of families, trees, nature, creation, ourselves in this lovely book. I'm not too surprised that I immediately fell into the words of this book so deeply. You see, I've always had a thing for trees, which is one of the reasons that it was so painful for me, at least initially, when we first started planning construction on our house here. We recognized that we would need to take out trees and lots and lots of the rhododendron cover that had protected the house from even being seen from the road for the 30 years that the house has been in my family. And for many years prior to our ownership of the little cottage in the woods. I wasn't so sure that I wanted things to change, you see. But we also knew that we really, really wanted to make that spot in the world our permanent family home which meant that we would have to change some things like giving up some of the trees and some of the cover. What I couldn't know without the help of our creative and wise contractor who believes in sustainable resourcing, shout out to you here, Andy Colson, is that while yes, we indeed needed to take down trees 
to make space for our additions on our house. And we would need to remove some and also prune some of the rhododendron. We could harvest the oak for our floors and bookshelves, poplar for the trim, pine for some decorative door and trim work, and maple for accents. Take the old and with love, transform it into something new. And by taking out some of the rhododendron choked out by weeds and vines and prune back some of the old growth, we could make space for new growth and health. We are making space both on the lot and in the soil and within our hearts for a new way moving forward as we move into our old new home at the beginning of June. This has not always been an easy journey. The day after the trees came down in October and the rhododendron were cleared, I went over to the house by myself. I sat outside in the driveway and I had a good cry. I have to hold the tension of the grief of how things were with the excitement of the beautiful new home that is becoming every time I go to check out the newest progress inside and out. This home was my family's cottage. It really was my mother's retreat space, if I tell you the truth. We were invited every once in a while. <laughs> It has been the place that my family and our close friends have come to for solace and for rest for a long, long time. Most things in it remained unchanged for the 30 years that it was all of ours until we started construction on it at the end of October last year. But now it has transformed quite literally into a new and different house. One of the things that I love most about it now though, is that the old cottage, as we called it, is still encapsulated in the new house. What was goes forward with what is and what will become as our family lives into that space. These past 15 months of the pandemic and being out of our building at St. James have been so, so hard. And I, I cannot give full voice to the challenge of that as I am new to the community of faith. I can't imagine how difficult it has been for some of you to remain connected to this community out, outside of the walls of the church on State Street. And yet some of you have found us on Zoom and you have found a community without needing to live in Black Mountain. My family and I were living in Pennsylvania at the onset of the pandemic. And as a chaplain, I was provi providing care to families and staff and patients as COVID first arrived in our hospitals last March. I find that those experiences are still deeply with me, some of them painful and even traumatic, and some were grace-filled, spirit-led and beautiful, and likely will be with me always. They are now part of my story. I am sure that your lived experiences during this time will also be with you, and deeply so. You see, we can't go back. We must find a way forward that integrates our experiences of the pandemic. Times of isolation, times of pruning back to the essentials, times of slowing down, times of cooking at home and being with our loved ones, 
times of grief and loss, times of fear of literally getting too close to someone else and too close to the air they breathe, times of being overwhelmed by work from home and school from home. We must make these part of our whole story, honor them, hold them, and move forward to make something new. This is also very much the case with our country's opportunity to explore racial injustice and the systemic racism and oppression upon which our country has been built, as well as how we have split into fractious factions where we can't even seem to agree on what is true anymore. We can't go back to a way that it was before we saw George Floyd murdered or heard of Ahmaud Arbery's murder or Breonna Taylor's or Dante Wright and now Andrew Brown Jr. We cannot just move past the insurrection at the Capitol as if the white hot rage that was present there and the division that was on display is no longer here. We must find a way forward and we must not ignore what has come to light as we have lived these past months. This is not easy work. And yet the reading from 1 John and the gospel today call us to do this moving forward. This work that is so critical, this hard work, this integration and honoring of all our story, the gifts and the heartbreak, they call us to do this work together in love. From 1 John, Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. And since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. And you see, we know that this is not some simple love, but it is an act of love, a doing love, a being love. As we move forward together, and as we look towards our coming together again, which we are planning for as a staff, and that Christy talked to you about last week, and that you will hear more about over the next weeks, we will be asking how we will love one another and our community together going forward. How will we be this act of love in our community of faith? and in our larger Swannanoa Valley community. What will we do going forward as a community of faith and in our larger community? How will we be in this place together and in our larger community together? I am certainly asking these questions as I plan the youth gatherings and conversations. These are some of the questions that we are prayerfully asking as a staff, and we invite you to ask them as we plan to come together again in our building. John's gospel reminds us of an important truth as we come together and hold these questions. While Jesus is the unifying vine, and here I'll be playful, I'm going to use the image of a rhododendron main trunk in my mind's eye as we're surrounded by its beauty in the Blue Ridge. God in John's gospel is the vine grower or tender of the beautiful rhododendron groves that so gracefully cover the trails here that I love. God prunes what needs to be pruned back to produce more fruit or more healthy blooms and shoots. Pruning doesn't always mean cutting back and throwing out. It means tending carefully for healthy growth. This is why we are prayerfully coming together into our place. We are listening and discerning carefully to the movement of the spirit and to one another 
and to the scientists and to you as we return. And we trust God to tend and guide as we mindfully walk into our home that will be both the same and not the same when we come together. Because we are changed as we come together again. And yet, I hold tight to John 15, 5. And here's my confession for the day. It was my favorite verse as a Baptist kid who grew up memorizing scripture. Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me, you can do nothing. Well, of course it was my favorite. I got to be a branch. Remember, I told you that I loved trees and I was a branch that was connected to other branches. And I was united with something that I could abide in. I could abide and fruit would bear forth from this union. I cannot help but wonder what fruit will bear forth if we love one another. Sisters and brothers known to us and not known to us. If we remain faithful and trust the growth and the pruning and the making space for what has been and what will be. And so I start where I began. The tree is saying things in words before words. It says, sun and water are questions endlessly worth answering. It says, a good answer must be reinvented many times from scratch. It says, every piece of earth needs a new way to grip it. There are more ways to branch than any cedar pencil will ever find. A thing can travel everywhere just by holding still. We will be finding good answers together through prayer and listening, stillness and faith and love. And some of them will be reinvented many times from scratch. Every piece of earth needs a new way to grip it. May we find new ways of gripping and holding as we come together and find new ways of being. There are more ways to branch than any cedar pencil will ever find, which means that our lives will never get boring if we just keep our eyes and our hearts open to new ways and new directions in which we can grow, integrating the old into the new with prayer and with love. Let's go forward together. Amen. Prayers of the people. <clears throat> I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our Bishop Jose, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of God. Pray that they may find and be found by God. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. I 
Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. We hold these persons in prayer. Charles, Charles, Christine, Emily, Courtney, John, Cindy, Keith, Maxella, Melanie, Karen, Bobby, Doris, Case, Joe, Robbie, Bill, Rachel, Max, Mark, Felissa, True, and Mitchell. We pray for all those in India, for the hundreds of thousands who are coming down with COVID. We pray for those in Israel who have suffered a major loss. Oh Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people and the multitude of your mercies look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O oh lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. May God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly right and a good and joyful thing to give you thanks, all holy God, source of life and fountain of mercy. You have filled us in all creation with your blessing and fed us with your constant love. You have redeemed us in Jesus Christ and knit us into one body. Through your spirit, you replenish us and call us to fullness of life. Therefore, Joining with angels and dark angels and with all the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we say together, holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Zen in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we failed to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us. And so we violated your creation, abused one another, and we rejected your love. Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people through Abraham and Sarah, who caught us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word, made mortal flesh in Jesus, born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory giving himself freely to death on the cross, he triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, take eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them. And he said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink this, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim together the mystery of faith. Christ has died. 
Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation, this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of your Savior, Jesus Christ, and grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us to, into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, that with St. James and all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever and ever. It is through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. My friends, we have the gifts of God. They are for all the people of God, and we take them in remembrance that Christ died for us. And we feed on him in our hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. This is the body of Christ. I am. This is the blood of Christ. We are. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food, and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that your life may be a light to the world. And the blessing of God, creator, redeemer, and giver of new life, be upon you this day and remain with you always. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you, Christy Neal. Um, thank you for that beautiful.